We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord, and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are going to transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. Somebody say glory. Give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. And how about a thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. I tell you what, it'll, it will. I tell you what, when the breath of God flows through your lungs, oh boy, I'm telling you what, it'll make you have a song and a praise. It'll make you sing and shout. It'll make you want to bless your brother. It'll make you want to get set free. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I tell you what, I love it. I love it. Amen. The presence of the Lord is sweeter than honey. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, look with me in the Word of God today to Philippians chapter 2. Praise God in verse 1. Paul, speaking to the church in Philippi, says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded and having the same love, being of one spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each one of you should look not at your own interest, but also the interest of others. Here the Apostle Paul tells us how to be united in the Spirit. Now, we're united in Christ already. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Amen. Now, that stone holds the whole building together. Now, Jesus gave Simon the name Petros, and he says, you're also a stone, you're a rock, you're the first rocky, amen? Amen. I love that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you see, the Lord said, you're the stone that's going to be the chief cornerstone. He said, now the Jews, they're going to stumble over this stone because they don't understand that that is the central core of the Old Testament is to fulfill the prophecies about the Messiah who would be the chief cornerstone. And he looked over at his disciples and he looked at all of them and he says, who do men say that I am? Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist raised from the dead. But he said, but who do you say that he, I am? He said, then Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my father, <laughs> hallelujah, my father, which is in heaven. He said, nobody had to tell you who I was, that I was this stone. He said, and uh, Peter, upon this rock, the statement that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So how do we become united? I'm united with you because of my faith in this stone. Hallelujah. That Jesus Christ fulfilled the prophecy. He is is the stone upon which this church and every church that calls the name of Jesus Christ is built upon Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. So you see, the Lord opened up the eyes of their understanding so they could understand, first of all, if we're going to operate in unity, which he was praying for unity. Because though they were united in Christ, yet some of them had strong opinions. How many of you know you got a strong opinion sometimes? And you think you're right. That's why you're so opinionated. Amen. It's not because you think you're wrong. You wouldn't argue so hard if you thought you was wrong. 
But then sometimes when you realize you're wrong, you still argue because you don't want to admit it. Amen. But sometimes you got to let it go. Let go and let God have his way. And when you're united in Christ, amen, that means that you may not understand everything the way that I understand. You may not look at every scripture the way that I look at every scripture. But you know what? That doesn't divide the body of Christ. As long as we agree on the central parts of the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to the right hand of the Father, the one who makes intercession for the saints, the one who delivers and sets the captives free, the one who saves unto the uttermost those who come and call upon his name. If you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, then I am one with you, and you are one with me, and we have a greater purpose, so together we can do great things for God. Hallelujah. 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 We can do great things for God. You see, sometimes we all get out there all by ourselves. And, you know, I heard about a little girl, and she was lost in the woods, and the whole community gathered together. And all of them were looking all around. But then a person said, I've got an idea. Let's all join hands. They made a huge line, and they all began to walk across. And, you know, it wasn't very long was that little girl they were all looking for why did they find her they joined hands together and became one unit instead of a bunch of individuals trying to do their own thing how many of us know when we are in the church of Jesus Christ we come together in one mind and one one accord and when we come together in one mind and one accord what begins to happen the Holy Spirit, just like on the day of Pentecost. When we were singing those songs today, I believe you were in one mind and in one accord with those songs, weren't you? And if you were in one mind and one accord with the praise and worship team as we were singing those songs all at once, there was a combined community called the believers, the saints, the church of Jesus Christ. And the whole church was singing to the Savior of the world by the power of the Holy Spirit to God the Father who reigns forevermore. The active agent of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, was moving through your spirit, soul, and then your body. Ooh, did you catch that? The Holy Spirit was flowing through your spirit, your soul, and your body, and the breath of God, the ha, ah, and the hallelujah, Jehovah, ha, ah, Abraham, amen, the breath of God flows through the church of Jesus Christ. He said, I pray that you be united in tenderness. I pray that you be united in purpose. I pray that you'll be united in your understanding of Messiah. Hallelujah. Because he said, you are the body of Christ. Now, how many of us know when we're the body of Christ, that means that you are his hand, you are his feet, you are his mouth. You are a part of the whole. And when the whole comes together, hallelujah, then the body begins to work and reach out and to touch in Jesus' name. I'm so glad I have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, I heard about this morning an atheist, and I thought, God, I'm so glad you're with me on the journey. And that man trying to live this life without a Savior, without the shepherd, the good shepherd, you know, I felt compassion for him. I didn't feel anger at him. I just felt compassion because I understood what he was missing. But you know what? Through the power of the Holy Spirit and through you becoming the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, maybe the illumination, hallelujah, of the Spirit will illuminate his spirit 
you know, the person said, I believe in science. And so this person told them, said they were talking, and I said, well, a good thing to say to them is, you know, you're a great scientist. You love to explore everything. So I want you to explore the spirit for a moment. Let's try an experiment. Let me pray for you and see what happens. Amen. You see, he understands that language. Experiment. Because I got a hypothesis. Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That when somebody prays in the name of Jesus, then the Holy Spirit is moving. Now, he will come to the door and knock. Now, it's up to him to open the door. But the Holy Spirit will come to the door and knock. Aren't you glad he came to your door and knocked one day? Give him praise for coming to your door one day and knocking. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I'm about to get happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the Messiah has revealed himself to me. And I'm like Peter. Flesh and blood didn't have to convince me of who Jesus was because that Holy Spirit came right in and said, He's the Messiah. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the Lamb of God. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the bright and the morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Hallelujah. He's the one who is called the Ancient of Days by uh, Daniel. He is the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly abundantly above whatsoever things you ask or even think according to the power that worketh in you. Praise God he can do it in you and through you. You are his instrument, an instrument of healing and anointing. You are the body of Christ. If Jesus is going to touch somebody, he's going to touch through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was talking with a man yesterday. He said, as you were ministering on television, he said, I was in my living room or he was in one of his rooms and he said, I felt the Holy Spirit. And he said, I had to get up and dance in the spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you see, your spirit is in tune it's activated to this dimension. You see, this atheist didn't understand the dimension I'm talking about right now. But you see, he can explore it. Amen. He can understand that there is a God who loves him. Instead of thinking that once he passes, he's just going to the ground and that's it. He can know that he can be with the Lord Jesus Christ, who he wants to be with forever and ever and ever. Aren't you glad you know him today? The Apostle Paul wanted the church to be united. We're the body of Christ. What is your function in the body? Whatever it is, the Holy Spirit activates within you. Paul told Timothy, I'm going to come, when I come, I'm going to lay hands on you and stir up the gift that is within you. Some of you need to get stirred up. You need some hands laid on you. I'm just telling you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit of promise has come. Thank you, Jesus. Because you have heard the word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes through and he speaks in his time for his divine purpose. He speaks in you and through you. Hallelujah. You see, God is communicating a message. Right then, I felt the Holy Spirit. He was communicating a message to somebody in particular. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. And it was to stir their spirit and for God to show them to say, I'm with you. I have been carrying you. I have been sustaining you. I've been strengthening you with my mighty power. For you are mine. I have called you. I have chosen you. You are my vessel and a vessel of honor for my divine purpose. Now receive ye the word and go forth rejoicing. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word. That's the divine move of God. Moving in us and through us. You say, well, I don't understand that, Pastor. Well, you just let go and let God, and he'll begin to communicate with you. The next thing you know, you'll be doing it too. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. He said to be united. We're the body of Christ. We're here to edify each other. All the gifts of the Spirit are for the edification of the church, to build up the church. That just built somebody's life up. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is here to build your life up through this body, the body of Christ. We meet here on Sundays at 11 and 10 for Bible study, and then Wednesday nights at 7, Tuesday at 10 o'clock right outside here where the men meet and the women meet next door, and then we all come together for fellowship, being united as one in Christ, in Christ, hallelujah, I said united as one in Christ, praise God, you see we all have variety, some of you like liver and some of you hate it, (laughs) even if you put gravy on it, I still don't like it, I went to see one of my members one day and she she was cooking, and she poured a bunch of gravy on that meat, and I thought, Lord, I'm going to have a good time today. <laughs> I grabbed, we got down there, and I bit into that thing, and it was liver, and I thought, oh, Lord. <laughs> I thought, I know how Samson felt <laughs> when Delilah <laughs> deceived him. I thought, oh, my goodness. I'm going to need all your help to keep a smile on my face right now. (laughs) Praise. That gravy is so good. Put some more gravy on top. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Gravy will make anything better. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But you may not like what I like, but we are one in Christ. Amen. We are one in Christ because he paid the price. So you see, we come together in the name of Jesus. This church is a great church, and people come here from every different walk of life. But when they come in these doors, they feel the presence of Jesus, the Christ. Hallelujah. And it's that presence that we want dearly. I don't care how long you run away from it. You can't ever get away from this presence I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Because it reaches down to where you're at. (laughs) Hallelujah. And he draws you back home. No matter how far you run from home, home is still home. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, because when, it get, when you get done with everything else and you come home, hallelujah, the Father is waiting for you, hallelujah, with his arms wide open saying, come home. And as you come on in, he doesn't hold anything about your past against you. Aren't you glad of that today? Hallelujah. He says we're going to have the best because you deserve the best, not because of what you've been doing, but because I want you to experience what it's like to be one in my home. Hallelujah, which is now your home. Praise God. I'm glad I'm home today with Jesus the Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we're all the body of Christ, but we're different. And some people are going to, they're going to enjoy hanging out with certain people more than other people. That's just the way we are because, you know, God made us the way we are. There may be some uh, people in the, in, that we know that are Christians that are in our church that sometimes we may not hang out with them 24-7. But you know what? We can love them from afar, can't we? I didn't say a fire. I said from afar. That means a long ways off. Glory to God. Amen. See, some people in the body of Christ still are infants. They may have been a Christian for a long time. Paul said, when I came to you, I came to speak to you as men, but I'm having to talk to you as mere babes in Christ. Is there not jealousy and envy and malice and strife among you? You're acting like non-born again people. Amen. Amen. He said, I wanted to give you the meat of the word, but I got to go back and give you some milk because you're not ready for the meat yet. You, you're still letting these, these different opinions create jealousy and anger and malice and strife. He said, but I'm here to tell you that it's about Jesus. He said, some of you say, I'm a Paul. Others say, I'm a Paulus. 
Others say, I'm Cephas. Others say, I'm Christ. I'm of Christ. He said, Christ is not divided. Paul wasn't crucified for you. He even went on to say, you know, y'all are debating about who baptized you. Who had the best baptism? Well, Paul baptized me. Well, Peter baptized me. Apollos, the great speaker, he baptized me. He said, that's nothing about who baptized you. Because when I baptize you or somebody else baptizes you in water, we are the instrument. We are Jesus baptizing you in that moment. When I lay my hands on you to pray for you, it is no longer Phil Keaton. It is Jesus. It is the hand of Jesus because I am the body of Christ. You say, you're, you're missing it, preacher. No, I'm hitting it. And your hands are the hands of Jesus when you lay hands on people. Whew, glory to God. I believe somebody got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe somebody got it. Amen. That's why the Lord said, I want you to lay hands and pray for people everywhere where Jesus went. He preached, he would teach, and then he would go and lay hands on people and pray for them. We operate in the unity of the Spirit. That means we believe that as we operate, we are an extension of Jesus Christ. To whoever has a need. See, Jesus went where the need was. He said, the well need not a physician. I came to seek and save that which is lost. He said, I, hey, I'm here to help people. I'm here to minister to people. I'm not here to gain the approval of the religious system. I am here to love on people. I'm here to touch their brokenness and bring healing to their spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and set at liberty those that are bruised and to set the captives free and to proclaim the acceptable day of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know this is the acceptable day of the Lord? Hallelujah. So you can receive whatever you need from Jesus Christ. He's the need supplier. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. He's a wheel within a wheel. He's the one who will set your spirit free and you'll soar like the eagle. Oh, praise God. You ask me why I'm dancing and shouting? It's because of Jesus Christ. I'm shouting praise God because of what he's done. I'm shouting, Debbie's better. I'm shouting because of you rejoicing in Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on shouting. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? I'm rejoicing today. Today, not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Oh, I did enough shouting back then, but I got some shouting today to do. Israel would, would go out and they won the battles because God took whatever. They were unified and then they began to shout praises to God because, you see, we've got to understand the power of praise. He's worthy of praise. It's for you, Lord, but yet you do something good in me. You know, I praise God because of who he is. When I sing how great thou art, I'm singing it because he's great. Okay, but you know what? <laughs> As I sing it. It does something for me. I experience the reality of who he is. So I am in Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. Even the Greeks taught that. And Paul said, this is about Jesus. In him, in Jesus. We live and move and have our being. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. You see, the body of Christ begins to minister in anointing. Now, what that means is this oil represents the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's a representation of God's Spirit. Now, when we lay our hands on you and pray over you and anoint you with this oil, the Holy Spirit of God begins to do a work inside of you. 
And if you are coming up for somebody else that needs prayer, then you become an intercessor through the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit flows through you and touches whoever you're praying for. Would you give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. God is wanting to restore and put living waters into your spirit. Your spirit is crying out. It's thirsty for more of the living waters because once you've been refreshed by those living waters, then nothing else matters. Let's stand and get out that anointing. We're glad that you could join us today for our program. You know, God is speaking to you. As you've been watching this program, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you and showing you what it is that you need from the Lord. And whatever it is, I want you to know we're here to pray with you because we know that God can reach you right where you're at. So if you've never received Christ as your Savior, pray with me. If you need something in your life that God is wanting to do, then also you pray with me. Because the Holy Spirit will minister to you and do what he desires as we pray. Dear Father God, I just thank you for sending your son Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you went to that cross. And on the third day, you rose again. And Lord, that you care about what's going on in my life right now. And Lord, I'm coming to you. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm bringing myself to you. I'm turning this situation over to you. I'm tired of carrying it. And I know, Lord, that you want to carry it for me. And Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And Lord, I thank you right now that you're a part of my life. And Lord, as I continue to look to you, I know that you're going to give me the strength for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so today, I'm trusting in you. And you said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you and you will direct my paths. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. And I'm so thankful that we can be a part of what he's doing in your life. Continue to read God's word, the Bible, and continue to go to God in prayer. Just tell him what's on your mind. And if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to the Souls Harbor Church located at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. As you come here, you'll feel the embrace of God's love. And you know, as God works in your heart and life, he makes us a part of the family of God all over the world. And we're just thankful today that we've had this opportunity to be a part of your life. May God richly bless you. Until we meet again, Keep your eyes on our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.